Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today's video is on designer clownfish, a topic which is often hotly debated amongst hobbyists. So why not let me know in the comment section below your view, are they stunningly beautiful or mutated freaks? So what exactly are designer clownfish? Clownfish with desirable genetic mutations are selectively bred in an effort to promote this mutation until the breeder is able to produce exaggerated versions of the original fish on a regular basis. Combine that with an interesting name and a high price tag and you have the recipe for a designer clown. Platinum clownfish for example started off as normal clownfish, with slightly wider white bands than usual. Generations of selective breeding has taken this attribute to the extreme, so that we're now able to produce a completely white clownfish. For this reason, these fish have rapidly become the guppies of the marine world, with new colours and patterns coming out all the time. One which has divided the marine fish community is the longfin version, which I personally believe looks like it's had a fight with a blender. In the past, these oddities were culled as they were often seen as defective, which is ironic considering these days they usually fetch a much higher price than the average clownfish. It doesn't feel that long ago that the first lightning maroon clown was discovered in the ocean, yet today I can walk into my local fish shop and discover a range of them for sale. In just 8 short years, this one of a kind fish has become mass produced and is now available in many countries around the world. This is a big achievement and is a credit to the breeders and companies raising these fish, but it hasn't gone without its shortcuts. With each fish produced carrying such valuable genes, there is virtually no quality control. When you combine this with a lack of natural selection, and that inbreeding is often the fastest way to promote a certain attribute, some of these captive bred fish exhibit deformities. These are often displayed around the face and gills which give the fish a squashed bulldog face and bulging eyes. Even some of these deformities are now being classed as a breed, which is where some people find it morally questionable. In any other situation, fish with these deformities would be culled, however due to their high sale value this doesn't happen allowing poor genetics to be passed on to the next generation. There are also positives though to buying designer clownfish. These fish have been raised in captivity, so do not affect the wild population. They readily take processed foods, and usually are disease resistant. There is something far more important than all of these put together. These fish generate profits for aquaculture companies which will allow them to research and experiment with more difficult species. This in turn will eventually lead to more captive bred marine fish being offered. If you're considering breeding designer clownfish yourself, try to get a pair from two different locations in an effort to mix up the gene pool, or even better, cross a designer clownfish with a wild caught clownfish. The chance of other designer clowns being born is significantly reduced, however you will have a batch of genetically healthy fish. That's it for today guys, but I'd like to leave you with one final thought. At what point did this naturally occurring beautiful fish become not interesting enough for some of us anymore? I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.